Today, we're talking to a knife maker that has done everything in his career backwards, and we're seeing why it's worked so well. Guys, this is TJ Schwartz. Let me show you the shop. Well, thanks for having us in the garage. You have a lot of impressive stuff packed in here, which is kind of cool. And we're gonna take a look at uh, three unique things that TJ is using. But first, why do you do everything backwards? And, and what does that mean? Because it's, it's pretty true, and, and that's, you got a really interesting story. I became a production knife designer, you know, designing knives for kind of a mass manufacturing type situation before I ever became a knife maker. A lot of knife makers that you've seen out there that become designers do just that. You know, you'll see their knives for sale at Cabela's. You could probably find the custom knife they made that inspired that knife. And that's kind of like the long history of designing knives for companies and how it's always went. I had a backwards kind of beginning to my career. I was a student for mechanical engineering, learning how to do 3D modeling in CAD. And a good buddy of mine from high school who is none other than Bill Koenig of Koenig Knives. He yep. wanted to start a knife company, right? I was doing a lot of pencil drawing at the time and he asked if I would pencil draw a knife for him. I said, I'll do you one better and I'll try to 3D model one because that's what I'm learning in school right now. Cool. I designed a few knives for him. Things started rolled from there, expanded, designed for production companies, still hadn't made a knife yet. So that's definitely backwards, I would say, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> well, and not just that, yeah. but it was, you did your first design with Koenig and that was just Two buddies, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and you were saying earlier that like this was kind of the first thing that opened your eyes to the knife world. Yep. Was when he approached you. So you guys do this design, and then you're in Hawaii, right? So you find out, oh, Ken Onion lives here. I cold called him. I'm yeah. on spring break vacation with like my parents, <laughs> and I just send him a Facebook message. I'm like, hey, Ken, I just found out you live on the same island. I literally just I was in the hotel when I realized he lives here. And so I sent him the Facebook message. He's like, come on up. Spent a whole day in the shop with him. And so cool. like a couple weeks later, I was talking to CRKT and had a few designs out with them That's in the cool. coming years. Yeah, so, and the first yeah. one was the uh, Caligo, which you have, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. Caligo right here. Yeah. So Caligo is a Latin word that roughly translates to black. Right. Schwartz means black. It's the German word for black. Had to be black on black. For black on black. Yeah. I love it. This is a really interesting design just in general because now all of your designs, to me, a lot of them at least, feel very outdoor inspired, right? Mm -hmm. It seems like more back to your youth, yeah. like hunting and fishing, right? Yeah. But this is kind of more of an urban design. And you had a couple other, I mean, some of the early stuff with Koenig, very yeah. urban, right? Yeah. Like urban right. carry. Is there a reason that you've kind of like went from one to the other or yeah. is it just like where you're at as a designer right now? I grew up in a really small town, really mountainous part of Idaho, super isolated, loved it up there. Mountains, all the good stuff, hunting, fishing, camping, and that was my roots. I came to Boise, which to me was the bustling metropolis, you know, right. I was going to school <laughs> and kind of found myself enjoying this new urban thing. And, and at that time in my life, like you pointed out, I was really into the more urban carry. Then a couple years later, I kind of felt that call, you know, like the mountains want me back kind of thing. And so lately my designs have been almost totally focused on the roots, you know, the yeah. The true outdoors, the hunting, the fishing, overlanding, yeah. of course. Which brings us to why you have two huge CNC machines in a single car garage. That's right. <laughs> Let's take I a do. look. I want to introduce you guys to Bruce. This is my chocolate lab, German short hair mix, my buddy, my friend. As he's gotten older, he's getting a little more picky about his food and starting to have some stomach issues. Let's just say if you're having a movie night, you don't want him sitting next to you. I started doing some research to find a better food to feed him. Independent of that, we actually had Sunday's Food for Dogs reach out to the channel and ask if they could sponsor a video. And so I did some research on them and I'm happy to announce that they are the sponsor of this video. They helped us have the gas money to get up and see TJ and get that going. And they make a stellar dog food. They are veterinarian formulated, veterinarian run company. They use real high quality ingredients and the food is super high in protein and all the vitamins and minerals your dog needs. Now Sunday says their food is human grade, which means better materials, better process, better product. It also means, I can give you a taste test. I'll say this, it's human grade, not human tasty, but Bruce really loves it. With high quality ingredients, high quality process, and a high quality product, there's obviously an increase in price to feed your dog on Sundays than probably the food you're currently feeding them. And that was my one hesitation when it came to Sundays. But to be fair, they are one of the most affordable fresh dog foods out there. So if you click the link down in the description, you're gonna get 35% off your first order. They also offer a subscription model that would give you another 20% off. So you can get 55% off your first order. So thank you so much Sundays for sponsoring the video. Let's jump back to the shop. 
Okay, so your first step backwards, you've got basically one design out there, you get some face time with Legend, and then now you're able to do some mass market designs with CRKT, which is super rad. And like we were saying, you know, you've got the Caligo, which is kind of an urban design, and then you have this other urban design with the windows and the carbon fiber, urban, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so then from there, your roots start calling you, and this is this is kind of the beginning of your next step backwards, right? Right. Is uh, the Overland, <laughs> right? That's right. Really awesome knife from CRKT, great design, all of that. I'm not just saying that because you're here, I've said it many times on camera. Oh, the Overland. the Overland. Oh, this is our buddy TJ designed this one. Now the really interesting thing is that you make a counterpart to that here in the garage. That's right. But this is the one that came first. Not right. not the designer one made first. It was the mass market mm -hmm. one first, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. Like I said, it's another kind of a backwards way to do it, but the funny thing is I always wanted to get into making knives the way I wanted to make them. And because I came from a CAD background, as opposed to hand making knives, I really wanted to get into the CNC business. And I really wanted to make these knives the way that I knew how to make them, which involved the technology that I was familiar with. You hear a lot of people that they start a business in their garage. It's the age old story. Well, I was in a position at that time where I was like, I don't have a garage. So that was my problem number one. <laughs> and you. so I'm designing knives and trying to pave the way into buying the house and I had rented a house, but there's a lot of power, there's a lot of oh, yeah. stuff, a lot there's of HOAs, yeah. there's all this stuff. So finally got the house bought, boom, got the CNC making knives. So that was a couple years ago and I was finally on the road to releasing the Overland Fixed Blade. Which is, I mean, really, right? Like is a direct pattern right off of the folder that you did with mm -hmm. CRKT, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what I love about it is like you were mentioning earlier, a lot of times you can, oh, okay, there's like, you know, the, the mass market and you can buy the custom or the production one from the maker. And it was very much the other way around for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. now you can get the Fixed Blade yeah. from the maker, which is pretty cool. And you've squeezed a lot into this small space, which is really impressive. Now you kind of have a philosophy around your designing, you have philosophy around making and process and things like that. You were calling this shop a prototype, right? right? My guiding light for what I do is the phrase, the process is the product. And what I mean by that is a knife is a iteration of your process. The knife itself is a way to share your process and share yourself with a customer. And so this shop in this little garage here is a prototype of the process that I want. You hear about prototyping knives a lot, but you don't hear, I guess, so much about prototyping a process. This is what I'm trying to make work. It's like the machine is the product, you know? One of the benefits of me making this Overland myself and developing this process is the amount of modularity that I'm able to use in that process. So I'm a Jeep guy, I love modularity. Bumpers, wheels, tires, you can change it all up. I wanted to make that possible with a knife. Every one of these knives leaving the shop can be totally different. I just love that in your, you know, backwards way, yeah. right? Like, right, right. In, the, in the biggest compliment mm -hmm. I can give you, right? Mm -hmm. But in your backwards yeah. way, you're like, cool, I'm gonna get a CNC machine and yep. this is how I'm gonna start making knives. Yep. I was really interested to hear like with this backwards philosophy that you have rolling, some of the like tools you're using the most and why. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we should pop over here and you should show because I think, I think it's actually interesting. I will. Let's kick it off with kind of your first most used tool. You were saying CAD, obviously, yep. right? Like that's where you're trained, right? That's right. So yeah. CAD, C-A-D, Computer Aided Design. Right on the nose there. That's uh, the computer and it helps me design and model everything that I make. It's what I would submit to a factory to then make a production knife. And so that's kind of how that kind of leapfrog or backwards thing happened is it used to be if you didn't have a physical knife that you made, how would you submit a design? Well, a 3D model is an approximation of that and can be used to engineer from, right? So CAD, super tool in the modern world in lots of industries, but especially the knife industry. Now you mentioned that there's a stone that you use a lot. So what are you using the stone for? It's interesting that you have this hand process involved. CNC's are really good at making precision geometry. It's good at putting the metal right where you want it to be. It's not necessarily what you need to make it look nice as far as the finish goes. That's where I come in, you know, and do handwork on the knife to, you know, bring things up to where they need to be. This is a tool that's in my hand a lot. Looks pretty low tech, that's because it is. It's a stone. I do do a stone wash finish. Stone wash finishes seem like maybe they would hide stuff. They don't. Anything that's there actually gets more prominent. Accentuate, I've seen wash. that. Yeah, it's yeah. a real thing. Yeah, and yeah. so <laughs> this is how I make sure my stone washes are nice and clean. Cool. This is a tool I hold maybe as many hours a week as I am in front of a CAD. Maybe yeah. more, probably more. <laughs> That's awesome. So basically like anything anybody orders from you has still got some yeah. some hand aspects yeah. to it, right? Yeah. Of like a guy in his garage making a knife. Yeah, it's kind of that, you know, finishing touch of that and the sharpening, you know, very oh, yeah. by hand, by yeah. eye. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of human elements that go into it. Knives are, they're a little tricky to make. What's the third tool you think is 
you use the most or that is really important to where you are now. To some people, this may be a letdown. To yeah. some people, this may be a light bulb moment. Yeah. I hope it's the light bulb for as many people as possible. Yeah. But this little device right here, good old cell phone. It's got a camera, it's got the internet. If you have those two things and you get good at something, you can get it out there, right? So without the community support that that device granted me, yeah. like I don't know where I would be, I really don't. And yeah. so we really do live in the 21st century. CAD is one of the tools of the 21st century. The cell phone, it's used for scrolling Instagram and doing things that are a little less productive, yeah. but it is one of the most productive things ever invented if you use it as such. You know? And for you, it started even before knives, right? Mm -hmm. Like it was actually before knives that you even learned what an asset that was, because yeah. you were doing like pencil drawings mm -hmm. of like muscle cars and stuff, yep. which are really cool. We'll flash them on the screen. They're like rad. I don't know if you'll commission oh, any, but they're pretty good. <laughs> um, but you're doing these pencil drawings. You were messaging Facebook groups that were into muscle cars and you're like, hey, I'll give you 50 bucks if you like feature this piece. Mm -hmm. And then you'd sell the drawing and then make some money and keep yeah. going. If I remember right, correct me if I'm wrong, that's how uh, Ken Onion even like, yeah. that's kind of what got you in with Ken Onion. See, Ken Onion told me the story. I think it was his daughter there teaching him how to use Instagram for the first time. This was in the early days of Instagram. And she said, look, hashtag knife. And he sees this panel of knives. And one of the first ones he saw was one that I posted with hashtag knife. And that was the groundwork for me to reach out, send him a message on Facebook, and for him to respond and say, I actually have seen your work before. And it made that connection. And like I said, it was a major pivot moment in the career. And it was just driving my exposure forward and trying to build a community around what I'm doing. For anybody who's interested in knife making, like, do you have any advice? I will say it applies to knife making, but it applies to everything. And that is, when you focus on something that you wanna do and you feel a pull to do that thing and you wanna make, let's say, a business out of it, if that's where you're headed, you just gotta do it. Because uh, I think analysis paralysis is the worst enemy of any operation, whether it's a hobby or a business. And that is, if you get frozen and think you need the best tools, you need all the equipment, you need all the shop space, you're not gonna get there until you start first, right? right? And so for me, you know, little shops, it's okay. I'll just stuff what I can in there. I would just say, do it. Just do what you can with what you have. Yeah. And it'll grow from there. Where can the good people find you? I have a website that's schwartzknives.com, S-C-H-W-A-R-Z knives.com. I have an Instagram at knife.designer.com. And check out my stuff. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, for sure. And thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely check out TJ's stuff. If you can't go for something that's coming out of the shop, there's a lot of great designs over at CRKT. Uh, I really dig that new, the little Overland. Overland Compact. Oh, dude, the <laughs> Overland Compact. That one's great. Even if you're gonna go that, you can't go wrong. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>